Good morning, this is Morgan Matlock with the, the Continuing Education Department at Central Texas College, and I'm going to talk to you about the credentialing assistance program that has recently been rolled out by the Army today. Um, so the Army's credentialing assistance program is modeled after the tuition assistance program that enables soldiers to request training and attain academic degrees and certificates to go Army Ed. As with tuition assistance, the credentialing assistance program is open to eligible soldiers of all ranks in support of credentials. The program pays for training courses, books, materials, fees, credentialing exams, and recertification. Students have a combined um, they have $4,000 that they can use per year towards TA and TAP. Um, the soldiers can take face-to-face, -face, online, and hybrid courses. And the most record, uh, requested courses that have been taken are Project Management, Lean Six Sigma Green Belt, and the American College of Sports Medicine Certified Personal Trainer course. Um, soldiers have to meet a few eligibility, eligibility requirements in order to um, access this funding. They, um, these are the requirements. We are not expected as college um, employees to determine whether the soldiers are eligible or not. When we get them, they will already be determined and approved. Um, so you can kind of look at these eligibility requirements, but in general, you're not responsible for knowing. So the program started back in September of 2018, where Fort Hood was actually the pilot program for the Credentialing Assistance Program. So active duty, Army Reserve, and National Guard soldiers in Texas started doing this about a year and a half ago. Um, CPC came in in April of 2019. We had several courses that were already approved um, via the Army, and we started offering those classes. Um, in June, on June 3rd, 2019, the Army moved it to Kentucky, and then in November, they started doing, offering the program to soldiers in Georgia, um, and some other places, including Hawaii, North Carolina, et cetera. Um, December 19th, it rolled out its last big limited user test, and then in January 2020, all soldiers all over the globe are able to participate in this program now. So there's several different types of pathways that soldiers can do. They basically cover every occupational pathway that you could be interested in. Um, the ones that we currently are offering right now are business and financial operations, um, computer and mathematical, construction, education and training, healthcare practitioners and technical healthcare support, um, let's see, management, office and administrative support, personal care. We're getting about half of the uh, pathways that are on this list. Ideally, by the time all of the departments have submitted programs for the credentialing program, we will be getting at least one off of every one of these career pathways. So as far as marketing efforts have gone, CPC has created a website for the Credentialing Assistance Program, um, which I will go over with you a little bit later in the PowerPoint. Uh, we're putting out newsletters, we're attending marketing events, especially events on Fort Hood that are directly related to credentialing assistance. We're working with site directors at other CPC campuses around the world, and the Fort Hood Education Center does a briefing every week. So, um, we are bringing in a lot of calls, probably upwards of 20 to 30 calls are coming in each week to the continuing education department. And we then filter those calls out to the departments that already have approved programs and connect those soldiers to those departments. So on the CCC website, in order to get to um, the credentialing site, you go students, military veterans and spouses, and then you hit the more resources under there, and then you go Army Students and Credentials Program. Um, if you cannot get that link, because right now the CPC website is not showing that link, you can go into the search box and click Credentialing Program, type in Credentialing, and it will come up as the first page that's available. So this is what our website looks like. At the top, it has a basic overview of what the Credentialing Program is, those blue links right there are the groups of classes that we're currently offering um, classes underneath. So if you click on those blue links, it'll take you to a list of programs that are available. And then if you click on one of the programs, it will take you to a page with specific information about credentialing for each of the programs. Um, then underneath it, we have some information about the testing center, and then we link them um, at the bottom of the page to where they can go on 
their own military websites to find out if they're eligible. So this is what our program page looks like. Um, let's say we went to project management, which is the page that I've copied in here for you to look at. It's the most requested program in the Army right now. Um, it has a program description, and underneath the program description, it has a link where you can get all of the information about the class. And that link either takes us back to the original page for that program from CTC, or it takes us to, if we have um, an MOU with an online provider, it takes us back to our CTC link to their page, which has the price, it has the textbook requirements, it has um, how long the class is, and a whole bunch of other information on it. Um, we did put in here the um, what pathways it's related to and how much the class costs. The scheduling um, is in there. And then also what types of students might want to take a class like this. At the very bottom of the page is going to be the contact person at CTC who this program belongs to. Um, currently, most of the contacts uh, say my name right now but we are going to be adding each department contact as they submit their courses. Those are all gonna to change to be specifically who will build and register the classes for the credentialing assistance. Um, some of the exams that the testing center already offers are listed there above. Um, the PMP exam is gonna be coming on June 1st, 2020. We're really excited about that exam. And uh, we have a list of exams that have been submitted to the testing center that they are researching and trying to get added to our exam offering as well. So while there are only 10 or 11 exams right now, soon we will hopefully have a whole bunch of these certification exams so that we can be one of the primary testing centers in Central Texas for all of these exams. Um, the programs that we already have approved for CAF funding are project management, ACSM personal trainers through the kinesiology department, Microsoft Office Specialist, through Computer Information Technology Systems, and ENT through DONA here on main campus. And then we also have a, go ahead, to the next one, a wide range of online classes that are already approved. Um, most of these are in the, um, what is the word, computer technology arena. So we have a lot of, um, coding classes, a lot of that sort of stuff. And then we also have IT medical classes that can be taken online too, along with project management and Lean Six Sigma offerings. These programs were submitted and they should be approved sometime during the first week in March um, for the credentialing program. These are all of the face-to-face -face classes that a few of the departments from CTC have already given us. We've received um, classes from the culinary arts department, from industrial technology, from computer information technology, and um, several of the continuing education healthcare courses are also on there. Um, hopefully all of these will be approved in the next week. These ones are the classes that have been submitted in Kentucky and Kansas that are face-to-face -face and also our Europe campuses have requested some face-to-face -face classes as well. These should also be approved within the first week of March. And this is a just another grouping of online continuing education programs that we've submitted as well, so that our students who are all over the world can take any of these classes and get their certification. So it's not too late to add a program. If you would like to add a program, we would love to have it. Um, what you need to do is you need to get the program title, the course name and number, um, related credential title, the, whoever the credential issuing agency is, program duration, location of the program, is it online, is it face-to-face, -face, is it both, um, is it credit or non-credit, is it both credit and non-credit, um, the cost of the program, if there's any additional fees, like do you have to have a CPR certification, or is there something else specific that you need to have for it. And then the registration point of contact and the coordination point of contact. And then also it has to be up on the CTC website. It has to have its page on the CTC website. So if you, if you have all of that information for a program and it leads to a credential, a licensure, a certification, anything like that, and you send it to us, we will get it submitted and then you can get more students enrolled 
and those classes in your department with different types of funding. So the student process. Um, this is a link that we are, we're going to put this page up on the website with this uh, WebEx so that you can see it. But this page is exactly what the students have to do to get approved. It's the first thing they have to do, the second thing, the third thing, all the way down to the bottom where they're um, done. So I'm not going to read this whole thing over with you, but this is what it looks like. And you will want to just become familiar with this, especially if you are a department who is putting on these programs already, because the students are going to call and ask you questions every step of the way. Um, so you'll want to have the answers just to make sure that we get their business instead of somebody else. There's also a, um, another page called questions to ask the training provider. This is the information that we put up on each program page so that students can look on our credentialing assistance program page and fill this paper out on their own. Um, most of them are not hearing about the programs by going to our webpage. They're hearing about it at a marketing event or they're hearing about it from a third party provider or something. Um, so they're going to call you and ask you for this information. So you can either direct them to the website or you can sit there with them and fill them out. Um, it takes about five minutes to fill it out with them. The only thing that's not on the website that you will have to provide for them is the course name and number, which is like CEOL 2010 or whatever that is. Um, I believe there's a reason we're not putting those on the website, so you can have to make sure that somebody is there with that information to provide it to the students. And then once they get this ask training provider questions completed, they submit their uh, Go Army Ed help desk case to receive the credentialing training, and then it takes from one to 30 days for that to get approved. When that happens, then Fort Knox is going to make payment to CCC. And the way they do that is the student submits their program um, request to Ed to Go. It gets approved. In that, it has the contact information for the payment. So as soon as it gets approved, they are going to call us and say, hey, the student's approved. We're ready to make payment. Um, and they are going to call Tracy Lentuler, who's going to um, take that payment with a government credit card. So far, all the students have come through have been continuing education students, but we would really like to change that um, so that we're getting some students in every department. Uh, what is the so there's a couple of facts that I just wanted to go over. What is the process for soldiers? They go through go, their go over the ed account. They have to talk to an ed counselor to review their plan. Then they will wait for further instructions from the credentialing assistance team. They cannot pay for anything up front. So which that um, goes into the next one, which is actually it's the third one. Um, students want to register before they're ready to pay, but we don't allow students to register before they're ready to pay. So you just have to let the students know you have to register the same day that Fort Knox is going to call and just make sure that you follow up with them to make sure that everything gets taken care of. Um, all right, so there's also another document that we're going to add, which is the service member fact. This has some basic um, question and answers like, can my spouse use Credentialing assistance, no, your spouse cannot use credentialing assistance. Um, I've already completed training for a credential. Will credentialing assistance just pay for the exam? Yes, they will. Um, I've already used all of my TA. Can I still use um, credentialing assistance? Yes, you can if you haven't reached the $4,000 per fiscal year uh, limit. Um, and there's a few other questions on there, too, that you may want to just get familiar with. All right, so that covers the basics of the Army Credentialing Assistance Program. Of course, this is a brand new program, so there's going to be a lot of changes coming out and a lot of updates. Um, I will put out more information to the college as it becomes available. Uh, if you do have questions about this PowerPoint or this presentation, or if you want to submit a program or just to talk to me about it, please don't hesitate to contact me. Again, my name is Morgan Matlock. My email is morgan.matlock at ccc.edu, and my office number is extension 1415, which is 254-526-1415. Diana Castillo is also working very closely with me in the credentialing assistance program, so if you can't reach me and you need to reach her, she's a great contact too.
Um, thank you for your time and hope you learned something.